Hi guys, this is Justin back with a, an engineer's perspective. I uh, will be talking steel again today. The subject of today's video is X50 CRMOV15, the German gold standard of steel. Um, we're going to run through some specs, some details, and draw, do some comparisons to kind of give a relative idea of where it stands. So let's kind of first get into where do we see it. Yeah, I've got schmutz on this blade, but German cutlery is the number one use. This is a Wusthof. Uh, this uses a X50, the same steel at a 58 HRC. You can also see it very commonly in knives like this. This is a Victorinox Fibrox and uh, same steel, but this is actually hardened to a much softer 50 five or so um, it's become the gold standard for a few reasons one is uh, they've just been using it for so long it's hard to move to something new but it just it just works for them uh, especially in a kitchen knife setting uh, let's go through the composition and draw some comparisons so x50 crmov 15 uh, the 50 means 0.50% carbon. The 15 refers to the approximate amount of chromium in there, 14.5%. Manganese, 1%. Molybdenum, 0.65%. Silicone, 0.75%. Sulfur, 0.015. And vanadium, 0.015. So let's talk about these. So carbon, 0.5%. That's for hardness and carbide formation. So it makes the steel hard. Uh, chromium is for corrosion resistance. Manganese helps in uh, producing the steel and machinability. Molybdenum also aids in uh, stainlessness and carbide formation. Uh, silicone helps in machinability, sulfurs and impurity. And vanadium in this amount, you're not forming any vanadium carbides, but you are gaining grain refinement from, uh, from this vanadium. Helps get that nice small grain, especially with this amount of chromium in there. So the idea behind this steel, uh, originally I don't know the history, I'm just looking at the composition and uh, drawing my own conclusions, is uh, basically they were looking for a stainless steel that would have a relatively fine grain. That's why they don't have super high carbon to match up to these chromiums to create super large carbides. And they've got this vanadium grain refiner. So to have a stainless steel with refined relatively refined grains and to have it be easily producible and machinable and uh, for one that gets to kind of this hardness range because when you're working with this steel and german cutlery in general part of your day-to-day -day life is one of these guys the steel is designed to be used with a steel um and all these are, you know, as you just line up your edge and you just don't have a lot of room here. And it just straightens that, that edge out. You're not sharpening, you're just straightening the edge about, back out. And you can definitely get a very large increase in perceived sharpness. You can go from not cutting a tomato to slicing easily through a tomato with one of these. But if you've got a blunted dull edge, you're, you're out of luck. You gotta take it to a sharpening stone. So and that's, that's what they got. That's what this is. They've been using it for a long time. They know how to work with it. And uh, just the cost of changing and how well it just works already is me why it continues to be used to this day in German cutlery. So let's kind of compare the German gold standard to the Japanese gold standard VG10, which actually stands for very gold 10. I believe the 10 refers to the amount of uh, carbon in there. Um, so you see you've got double the carbon, about the same amount of chromium, you've got a dollop of cobalt in there, once again manganese and molybdenum for the same reasons, silicone for the same reason, impurity, and vanadium for the, all those are the same reasons. So let's talk about the differences, mainly this increased carbon and uh, that cobalt add. So the cobalt add, they say it can make 
it kind of brings out the characteristics of all of these other things a little bit more. Puts an extra shine on the, their effects, but mostly it has two effects. One is it makes it easier to heat treat VG10 up to a higher hardness, and it will also make it hold that hardness at higher temperatures, which for VG10 isn't important, but if you're making like a drill bit that gets hot, then cobalt is very important, same with tungsten. And that higher carbon add with a relatively similar amount of chromium and molybdenum, but these are both higher. So you have more of these carbide forming elements so that means they're gonna soak up some more of the carbon. So you need more carbon to make it harder and they added some extra yet to get up into what's usually done as a 60 to 62 Rockwell range. And I brought in, a, so I've just got a something in VG10 here. It's just a Tojiro 120 millimeter Petty. Um, on the pocket knife world, usually you see VG10 done very soft, like 57, 58 Rockwell. My opinion, it doesn't perform very well in that range, but the thing with VG10, an X50, X50 still has big carbides, big globs that will show up that significantly de decrease its hardness compared to something like AEBL or FC61, if you're into Zvilling or uh, Miyabi. But it, it's basically worse. It just has worse toughness than the X50 because there's just more carbide that's formed. And it's just doesn't have the toughness. So EDC companies, EDC knife companies just aren't willing to go to that hardness and not have it, you know, break. The toughness is just too low for them. And then uh, taking one, one more jump up, you know, you're kind of going the jump ups into Ferraris here. So now we're in the SG2 or R2. The SG2 stands for super gold too. So now you're not very, you are super. And you've got, once again, an increase in carbon and that matches up to the increase in molybdenum and now vanadium. You've got enough vanadium where you're starting to form vanadium carbides. So they've got enough carbon to get hard and uh, to form these carbides left over between all that stuff and everything else is pretty much the same. No cobalt on there. Cobalt actually seems to have a detriment in toughness, but I can't speak to that too much. But the big difference is that SG2 is a, a CPM steel, which means they spray form it into tiny, tiny little beads and then smush that together into a billet, which makes the carbides in SG2 a lot smaller. So SG2 actually has the smallest grain structure of these three steels despite the fact that it has the most alloy in it. And on that note is this has more alloy in it, but it's tougher than VG10. I'm not sure how it compares to X50 though, to be completely honest. So SG2, you'll see it run between 62 and 64 Rockwell. And that's because it's that uh, particle metallurgy technology allows them to do that. So, that's kind of where this stacks up is it's, this is like a minivan and you've got your, I don't know, sedan, but you bought the upgraded version with a turbocharger maybe. Oh, will just call this a sedan. And then this is more your like twin turbo uh, sport model of the car, of the sedan is what you've got in terms of here. But the minivan is functional. I drove a minivan for a while and uh, it's just very functional and gets the job done. So this is less kitcheny, but this is something you can speak to for the toughness. So let's talk total carbide volume. So the amount of chromium that matches up to carbon and molybdenum in that mix results in a total carbide volume of all chromium carbides in a 6% carbide volume. So in the kitchen, normally the fine edge, which is, has to do with the hardness, is what we notice. But especially on a steel like SG2, I find, when you lose that perfect hardness, because it has, instead of 6%, it's got 12.5% chromium, or 12.5% total carbide, and 1% of that's this vanadium carbide, is that it keeps kind of like teeth in it, and it'll still cut things better once it loses that perfectly sharp edge. I really enjoy that in a SG2 so far. And for that, I've got a Miyabi Mizu, a nine and a half in, or 240 Kiritsuke. This one I've 
came to me with some issues and instead of sending it back, I fixed it myself. So I've thinned this out significantly and this height is notably shorter than it is from the factory. So that's why it's all scratched up, but I really like this knife. So, so the hardness gives the fine edge and the carbide volume gives that those extra teeth once you lose that. So VG10 has 12%. And SG2 has 12.5%, but some of them are this vanadium carbide, which it's hard to say it was 100% where that toothy edge comes from, but it is, there's a noticeable difference in SG2 between VG10 and that, in those teeth, once you uh, have had that same edge working in the kitchen for a while. Now there's some sources. I had to do some estimation on these numbers by comparing it to some other steels for SG2. But uh, yeah, that's really quick, some practical usage notes. So with the X50 CRMOV15 at 58 Rockwell from Wustoff, I find that if I sharpen this to 1,000 grit on this stone, which is a nano hone 15 micron uh, ceramic splash and go stone, as I end with really light pressure so the edge doesn't is a much more refined than a standard 1000 grit edge would be but i can go in my own usage about three three weeks of uh, using this guy once a day before i feel the need to resharpen personally um, on something like this victorinox it's a little bit of a different story um, maybe like one week but before I feel like it's losing that power, but if this degrades down from, you know, 100% perfectly sharp to 90% with this on the first week, and then maybe 88, 85% the next week, and then 80% after that, and then once it gets to 75, then I want to resharpen it, this will bring this one back up to, you know, that... 85% sharpness for much longer, if that makes sense. So this will keep this sharp longer than this, but the level of sharpness will be lower than this overall than it is on the Wustoff. So my preference so far has been with the, the Wustoff style um, of knife. So that's what you're looking at. I, I would say personally one month at maximum some people say that this is just like run-of-the-mill if you watch a bunch of youtube videos you hear this is like three to six months before they feel the need to to, to resharpen if they're using this regularly um, that all depends on your usage your ingredients the frequency everything but and what what you consider to be sharp versus needs to be resharpened. So I'm kind of a snob. I like sharp knives. So one month max for me on this guy. And sharpening it super quick. I have a video of it. It's super easy. I did do a 5K on this finish, but I think I did an 800 5K on this, but this is my preferred sharpening method for these guys, for really all stainless steels. Versus something like this is I would don't touch the edge at all for maybe two weeks maybe i strop once a week for two to three weeks and then i feel like this needs a resharpening so i'm resharpening just as often it's just i'm not the cutting experience is difference between the two and i'm using this more with these two and for vg10 uh probably more like two weeks where this would be three for me so that's kind of the practical usage of it so there's that Minivan, sedan, sedan with turbocharge. Um, I think SG2 right now is the gold standard in, in Japanese cutlery for stainless steels. I think that's really a great way to go um, for my usage anyways. And I think that if you say you like this style of steel and knife, it works. No questions asked. Rock on. I have no qualms with that. So that's what I've got for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, that's it. See you next time. Bye.